Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Test and Tune. So, it's been one of those weeks, the fridge broke on Wednesday, and yesterday the washing machine decided not to work. Now, let me show you what it's doing. It's doing the hum, which appears to be a pretty common problem with a lot of washing machines. So if we just turn her on, and we'll just request a spin cycle. So we get that hum. That's it, that's all it does. It won't actually start to spin. Just hums, which isn't good. So we will turn it off and we're gonna kill the power because I'm gonna show you how I diagnosed it. So, uh, quick rundown. With these washing machines, in fact, with a lot of washing machines, now let me just preface this as well. We bought this washing machine secondhand for like $150 a year ago. It's rusty, but it works. And I don't really wanna buy a new one. So. Please don't freak out about the condition of it. And what I might do before I lay it down, I'll just put a towel down here because we are sort of playing with electricity and I don't like the water. Two seconds. Just gonna put the towel down so that I can lean the washing machine forwards. Make sure if you're gonna do this, your hoses are gonna reach. So the washing machine is down on the towel and we can get to all the innards. Now I have actually diagnosed this. And where my problem was, got disconnected from the power, we had basically lots of breaks in the wiring in this section just here. But it's not always the problem. It's either gonna be, generally, it's either gonna be a break in the wiring or the capacitor. And that is the capacitor there. Now they use the capacitor to actually get the motor to start spinning. And don't, I'm not an electrical engineer, but basically it does something with the phases and pumps power into the right way to actually get it to start spinning. Now, what I did to work all this out, I could see that we have a wiring harness just here going into the motor, and you could quickly work out that the blue wire runs up and over down to the capacitor. The red wire, actually, let me get it unplugged. Again, make sure you're not connected to the mains because if something triggers it, you will get electrocuted. There's a lot of moisture and power down here and it's just dangerous. Don't do it unless you're really trying to save money. That's the disclaimer. Please be careful, everybody. Um, okay, so we've got the, the main red power wire and then we've got a small red wire that's in the loom. And you can work out pretty quickly that the red wire just comes out the top and makes its way over to the capacitor. Blue wire does the same thing. The green wire is an earth. This green wire was also broken. The wiring, obviously it's it's quite a moist and warm spot down here. God knows how old this washing machine is. Somebody might be, I don't know. But um, yeah, I guess it's just not a great condition for wiring. And you can see all the electrical tape that they've sort of wrapped the wiring in. It's just gone rotten and rust, not rusty, but it's all fallen apart. Just not great conditions. Now, a lot of the wiring, the green wire was actually very badly corroded inside. Before I joined it, I did actually have to clean the wiring. Uh, the red wasn't too bad. The blue wasn't actually broken up here. The blue was broken further down. Over here, the blue had a break in it. Um, and the yellow also had a break in it. Uh, now, obviously to check the to check the wiring, the easiest way you can do it before you undo all of the, the electrical tape that runs all across is just with a multimeter set to resistance. And all I was doing and I like to set it so that we have an audible beep when we join the, the two together. So all I was doing, I can put a probe in this side. This is difficult to do one-handed. And then we can touch it to the red wire on the other Turns side. Turns out doing this one-handed is awfully difficult, but got the probe in that side and then you can touch it on that side and you know you've got a good connection with the red wire. Um, I think what also happened, I reckon just one wire was broken, but as I started moving the harness and disturbed it, that's when I started to encounter the problems with the other wires. Uh, the green wire is just an earth, so the green wire wouldn't have actually stopped it from working. It was the most corroded, but yeah, we're, we're now here where we've checked everything. So we've checked the red wire, that's making a connection over to the capacitor. Let's just check the blue wire and we will plug the capacitor in there. Oh, blue wire onto the capacitor and we should get a connection. 
yeah, no resistance. We have a good connection to the blue. Now, generally, it's just gonna be the red or the blue wire that's going to the capacitor, feeding into the motor that's causing this humming problem. However, this one, again, it's probably because I had all the wiring open. It was the yellow wire also ended up getting broken as well. So to check the yellow wire, I just removed it from this here, which I think is, I think it's like a brake, a brake motor. Don't really know how it works. But yeah, I just made sure that we had a connection with the yellow wire in this harness over to here, which I'm just gonna check it again. I'm getting a bit paranoid. I guess this is something that you gotta take into consideration with an older appliance like this. Yeah, right, we've got connection on the yellow wire as well. Okay, so with everything now making a good connection, I'm gonna plug it all back in. Uh, one last thing, I, I did, I know I read online, a lot of people check the capacitance of a capacitor. Um, it's a bit of a mouthful. Unfortunately, I don't have the ability to do a capacitor check. I'll just plug the motor harness back in. It's awfully tight. Okay. Uh, I don't have the ability to do a capacitor check, but if we can discharge, actually, I'll just get the clips off and I'll show you how you can do a resistance check on the capacitor. Actually, I probably should have shown the camera. There are little hook releases on the wires which I ah, can't do one-handed. Two seconds. Yeah, ah, there it is. And we'll just get inside that one. Okay, so release those two. Now I just used a... Oh, the camera works terrible. I just used a wire just to short that out. So that will discharge the capacitor. You know there's nothing in the capacitor. You do need to be careful. If that's properly charged, it will give you a good zap. So don't touch those wires with bare hands. Okay, so I've rigged up some helping hands because I just can't do this one-handed and hold the camera. Okay, so I've got the multimeter set to ohms. I have shorted out the capacitor so there shouldn't be anything stored in the capacitor. And with it set to resistance or ohms, whatever it is, when we connect them, you can see the multimeter climb and then it'll stop climbing. And what it's doing there, as it's measuring resistance, which it uses a voltage to do that, it's actually putting the voltage into the capacitor. So you can still see, although it's not an accurate measurement of the capacitor's capacity, <laughs> you can still see that it is sort of functioning by doing that. So if you don't have the ability to do a proper capacitor test, with a, you can just use a basic one on resistance. So let's reconnect those. And I need to sort out this wiring. I'm gonna solder that together, heat shrink that one. That's the last piece in the puzzle. And then we should, hopefully, be able to test it. All right, let me get this done. All right, so I'll give that quick clean. I wish I cleaned it before I started crawling around on the floor. Um, top tip, clean up first. Now, I have, I've soldered, I don't know if you should solder AC, but I've, I've joined it. Two lots of heat shrink on it, some thin stuff and some thicker stuff, just to try and protect the join from moisture, that sort of thing. Um, I think if I was gonna repair this with the intention of it working for another five years, I'd probably replace the whole wiring harness and then re, uh, re-tape it up with an outer, with an outer shield just to keep moisture off it, but I've got no doubt that that wire is gonna break and we only need it to last like another six months, that'd be great. So I guess, moment of truth. I think it's gonna work. I did a test earlier and it did work. All right, let's put it back up. Okay, power it back on. And we'll go a spin. So that's the pump. Sounds like a hum. Now it should start spinning. There it is. Fixed a washing machine. Feel pretty good about myself. Um, I'm gonna give it a good full clean actually because it's looking a bit messy. And it was a cheap second-hand unit, but there's no, no need not to look after it. Um, what I'm gonna do, I will put a load of wash on, just make sure it does work fine before I upload this video, just in case there's like a loading issue with the dodgy wiring that's been rejoined. But I think we fixed the problem. What you should take away from it is normally if it is humming, it's normally just something to do with that capacitor. Either the, the capacitor itself has died or the connection between the capacitor and the motor, normally. Should be quick and easy to check if you've got a basic automotive multimeter. 
and yeah, hopefully save you guys some money. All right, thank you very much for watching. We we'll catch you on the next one. Oh, actually, I did also research getting a replacement capacitor, so I will put a link to the 11 farad 450 volt AC capacitor that I would have bought if my capacitor was knackered, but it was just wiring. Anyway, thanks again. Peace. Like a new one. Just needs a good clean.